Hi, my name is Dave Sharps. I pastor a church in Chandler, Arizona. I'm glad you're here to explore membership in the Church of the Nazarene. I want to talk to you about infant baptism. One of the more controversial expressions of baptism in evangelical churches. I think the reason for it is because some of the misunderstanding that surrounds infant baptism. Some of the questions are, is it biblical? Do you ever find in the scripture where infants or children were being baptized? Some say it is choosing for your child instead of letting your child choose for themselves whether they're going to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Others think about it in terms of Roman Catholic theology. Is it about cleansing away from the guilt of original sin? Well, those are all excellent questions. And we want to answer those questions from three perspectives. First of all, biblically. Biblically, the rite of infant baptism is a typology or the same identification of a part of the church as circumcision was in the Old Testament. On the eighth day in the Old Testament, a child was circumcised, identifying that child as a part of the people of God. When it comes to infant baptism, parents present their children and water is used identifying that child as a part of that community of faith. The second biblical reason that we find is often in the scripture we hear about households coming to faith in Jesus Christ. In a patriarchal society when the father chose, everyone else chose as well. And so the decision was made that we would raise our children as followers of the way of Jesus Christ. You see it in the example of the Philippian jailer when he and his whole household, the scripture said, were baptized. That word for whole house includes words like whole or entire or inclusive of everyone, even small children and probably likely as well slaves and servants in that household. All were invited to be raised as those that would be followers of the way because of what was chosen by the father in the home. The third idea is even in the words of Jesus when he looks at the children and says, come unto me for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Jesus was expressing very clearly at this point in their age of innocence as these children are a part of the very life of God and a part of our community of faith. And we have a responsibility in their innocent years to raise them in that way. And baptism simply identifies them clearly as a part of the family of God. Theologically, Nazarenes believe in what we call the prevenient grace of God. It's a grace that protects, that guides, and that calls us to the kingdom of God. So a child living under that canopy of prevenient grace in its innocence is a part of the kingdom of God. So we say, why not identify that child? Note that that child in its innocence is a part of the life of the kingdom and using water simply indicates that. Later, that child will clearly need to make a personal decision for Jesus Christ to acquire what has already been willed for them by their family who's raised them in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. We believe baptism has an historic, historic precedence as well. Obviously in the first century church, those that were coming to follow the way came from pagan backgrounds and so all of them were believing before they were baptized. For parents who are choosing to raise their children in the church, or are being born into the church, if you will, those children need to be encouraged in their faith. To be clear here and understand their expectations that they will be followers of Jesus Christ. Again, it's not something that's being done for them, but something that's being willed for them. Just as God wills that all of us should not perish, but come to repentance, so we as parents will and desire for our children to follow after God. And just as God does not force His will on us, we choose whether we're going to be a follower of Christ in our salvation. So parents may will that for their children, and in the act of infant baptism, make a strong and clear statement, not only to their child, but to each other, as well as to the church, that they anticipate that in the days to come, as that child comes to the age of moral accountability and responsibility, when they recognize their personal sin, that they then will confirm that what was done for them they've now acquired and accepted into their own lives. You know, another great option in the Church of the Nazarene is what we call infant dedication. I know how meaningful those times are in our church when parents as well stand before the church to say they intend to turn their child's feet to the sanctuary and as much as lies within them to raise their child in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. 
It's a very important time. And I believe that as parents make that promise and that covenant before God, they also are promising that congregation and at our church, we have the congregation respond back to them as well, promising that when they see their child in the nursery or in the hallways, that they're going to make sure they're intentional in investing, speaking life and encouragement for that child's spiritual journey. So whether you choose the strong symbolism and the use of water for infant baptism, or whether your passion is as parents to stand and dedicate your children before God, whatever the practice of your local Nazarene church is, talk to your pastor about that. But let me encourage this, that we're extremely intentional in these days, mom and dad, as to what it means in difficult times to raise our children before the Lord. I think we need a lot of help. There's a lot of negative influence out there. So as much as influence as we can bring to bear as the community of faith, the body of Christ, it is so significant in these days. So I would encourage your church to make that same covenant with the family as they're seeking to raise their children to honor and to glorify God. And may God bless you as you're raising your children that you might indeed, as moms and dads, find the peace and the guidance and the wisdom that God will give you when you ask of Him, and He promises to give it in abundance.